Welcome to your iExplore video for today. Please turn to page 56 of your reading composition book or your reading journal and you'll find the section labeled Poetic Elements, Structure and Form, Part 1. This is just a quick review of what you probably already remember having learned about poetry and poetic elements from your earlier grades, but uh, a lot of these terms are difficult to recall spur of the moment, so I'm going to review them for you. So a big thing to remember whenever you're reading poetry is that a poem is like a potion. I always think of the Shrek movie where they're out to get the potion in order to make Shrek a handsome prince, and all they need is a very small bottle of the potion to effect really amazing results. And that's kind of how poetry is. It just takes a small poem to express a very strong feeling. And that's why you use figurative language, sensory devices. That's why every word that goes into a poem has to have an impact and has to have a meaning behind it. So a narrator, speaker, or author may decide to create meaning and visuals for the reader through careful construction of the poem, including the form and the structure. Consider the structure elements that can create meaning discussed below. So basically what this is telling you is that even the way that you craft the structure of the poem can affect the meaning of it. So let's look at shape poems, and you may have seen these in elementary school. Um, but shape poems are where the actual poem is shaped like the message that it is conveying to the audience. So this particular shape poem is about volcanoes, and as you can see, the shape of the poem is in the shape of a volcano. So it helps you to visualize the emotions of the writing. And there are many other shape poems. One of the famous ones for middle school and junior high is its shape of a seal, and it's about a seal. Um, there's a famous one that I often read for high school students that's the shape of a window. And so those are just some other examples of famous shape poems. And then line spacing is also very significant for meaning in creating meaning in text. Um, for this line out of a poem, it says, I stood alone. And the space here provided in between the word I stood and alone, this empty space, um, lets you literally visualize the word is standing alone by itself. So it reinforces the meaning of the words. The word states, I stood alone. And the word is literally standing alone, so it gives you that visual and it helps to craft that additional meaning to the feeling or the emotion that's already there. And then bolding in italics. This is a very commonly used device that authors um, like when they're writing poetry. And so perhaps when you write some of your poetry, you would like to use bolding or um, italics to create meaning. But here you see you have the author has written, I hate long, boring days. And making the word itself long emphasizes that feeling of this day dragging out as if it's never going to arrive at its end. So the purpose is to give you that feeling that the author has when experiencing the day. Now, if you turn to page 57 in your reading journal, and let's look at a few more characteristics of the structures of poetic elements. So here are some basic terms you probably already know, but it's just a quick reminder to refresh your memory. A stanza is the paragraph or verse. A rhyme is when you repeat the last word of a line um, multiple times, and so that it creates that rhyming effect. And rhyming can be very important. Some of the purposes can create that feeling of moving forward, maybe a feeling of confusion, depending on how the rhyming is done. So there can be purpose behind rhyming. And then rhythm is um, created by like the number of syllables in a line, so it can give a beat to each line. That's where you just you break the word into its syllable, syllabic parts and you count those for the beat. And then forms. Forms are different basically types of poetry and the purpose for which they might be written. So some common forms of poetry that you might be familiar with include um, free verse poetry. It doesn't rhyme, but it gives a lot of imagery and figurative language and sensory language, and that's how the feeling is expressed. And limericks are hum humorous five-line poems. A lyrical poetry is rhyming poetry. It even includes songs, so it's basically it has that rhyme scheme, it has the rhythm to it, and um, it's called lyrical. A ballad is a poem that rhymes and is written in praise of a hero, so it's a longer story-like poem. And then an epic is a very long book poem that usually tells about a hero's journey, like the epic of um, Iliad. 
and the Epic of Gilgamesh. And there's many other forms of poetry, but these are the most common ones you have learned in the past or that will be assessed um, this year in English 1. And then here is um, an example of rhyme scheme. And rhyme scheme is something that um, it has to do with how you calculate what words rhyme with what other words. So when you're calculating the rhyme scheme of a poem, the first line is always labeled with an A because it's the first letter in the alphabet. And then you just look at each verse as it stands alone. You don't compare one verse to the next one when you're determining rhyme scheme. So if you look at just this one verse of this poem, Star, um, you'll see that the first line has ends in the word star, which rhymes with the word far, and the second line, so they're both labeled A because they have rhyming words. And then far is used again in the fifth line, so it's labeled A as well. And then the two internal lines, line of three and four rhymes, so they're labeled B. And you just move forward alphabetically, so after you use A, then you move to B, and then you move to C. So let's read this poem. Once there was a wonderful star who had thought she would go very far. Until she felt down and looked like a clown, she knew she would never go far. And what kind of poem is this? Well, this is limerick poetry. It's five lines and it's humorous. And um, the A lines each have eight syllables. So if you count them with claps, there once was a wonderful star. Um, and the B lines each have five syllables. That is what creates a particular limerick beat. And so that's how a limerick form poet poem is created. And this is just a quick review of poetic elements and po poetic structure. Please make sure that you read over and you understand these different terms and terminologies because later when you analyze poetry you'll be trying to determine how the different characteristics of a poem like how the words are spaced or how long the lines are creates meaning that matches the actual theme of the poem. So make sure you've reviewed this and you're comfortable with it. Um, go to your table of contents and label it, page 56 and 57, Poetic Elements and Structure and Form of Poetry. Have a great afternoon.